Howdy, my friends. Happy Tuesday afternoon. Uh, I don't normally do um, a Tuesday afternoon stream, but I felt like it today. Uh, first off, um, I want this to be kind of like an open lesson, so anything that you want to talk about guitar-related, let's just do it. Just fire it off there, and I'll see if I can help you. Um, second order of business, I want to say... <laughs> That uh, for all of you that watched my video yesterday about uh, um, compression and Corey Wong's pedal that he sent me, um, it was brought to my attention that uh, his pedal was actually uh, going to be released today. And he and Wampler and everybody had it all planned out. And um, I went and made that crazy video saying how much I don't use compression or like it or understand it uh, literally the day before the launch and kind of screwed that up before them a little bit. Um, now, he didn't tell me not to do that. Uh, I, I was not informed that there was a launch day, but nonetheless, a public apology, uh, apology I feel is in order. Okay, so let's see who's here today. Uh, Lise, good to see you. Actane, many vibes. Uh, Bo, I can't get away from letting my influences take away from finding my voice. Well, you know, that's one of those things where, like, imagine you're learning to speak, right? You're a child and you're, you know, wherever part of the world you grow up. Um, you do eventually find your own voice and your own cadence and the way that you like to use inflection along with your body language and eye contact in general. Uh, but you do that by being exposed and having experience to other people talking and using their body language, etc. cetera. Um, so there's really no way to develop your own voice um, and be able to um, uh say things and emote things that are familiar with other people without being exposed, you know, to, to, to your influences, right? So open the door, let them in. The key here is not to just get stuck in fretboard land and tab land. It's to put words. Um, you know, one of my new favorite sayings now is, you know, music theory is just the study of why things sound good. So if you find things that sound good, Put the words to it. Oh, yeah, that's the flat three, whatever it is. And so then you have it and you can use it, and that'll accelerate you growing your own voice. Um, really? Only 720p? I'm using my 4K camera. Uh, I don't like that. I don't like that. Okay. Let's see here. Yeah, Mr. Tonic, yeah, be able to play with the wrist healing up. Good, 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 good. Um, many vibes. My problem is I love alternate tunings too much and haven't memorized my fretboard as a result because standard tuning is boring. Okay, you know what? There's some truth to this, but it's two-sided. Number one, um, alternate tunings will get you to play stuff you weren't going to play otherwise. It, it, it forces you to get past the shapes that you know and strictly use your ear in a new way, um, which is great. Same, same thing, uh, get beyond the guitar, play the piano, and don't just think with muscle memory, right? Think just like you were young again, it's your first time, and just use your ear. But then go back and again, put words to it. Why does this sound good? What am I actually playing? And then you can take that to standard tuning. Um, I, for one, don't get bored in standard tuning. I feel like I'll be chasing it the rest of my life. But I totally understand how you get hooked on the open stuff. Totally get it. All right. Uh, release the reel. Tone, no matter. The gear is always a roller coaster. This is one issue I don't have. I do not have the gas, the gear acquisition syndrome. I never think about the gear. But I know for so many people... Whether it's, um, and by the way, this is important to note, this is kind of a personality type thing. It's not unique to music. Like, I ski, I have friends that have all the gear. They have all the new products that come out. They got the gloves, they got the new goggles that you can switch out the goggles every day depending on the light. I don't do any of that. 
I've been skiing my whole life. I have no problem whatsoever taking my 190 Dina Star rock skis out on a perfectly, you know, in 2023 and, you know, my boots that have been packed down forever, like, I don't even kind of care. So that, that, that's just, in a nutshell, I never really think about buying stuff to solve problems. Um, Bo, you are very, very welcome. You're very, very welcome. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Jameson, what's giving me the most trouble? Oh, easily making money with it. Okay, yeah, um, that's definitely true. Uh, you can still go out and do a bar gig and get a hundred bucks and maybe get a meal and a couple beers and do that. But it is it is very very hard to make a living um, uh, making music, playing music. Uh, it's it's very easy to make a little bit of money and have and work every day and have that little bit of money every day add up to something moderately sustainable. But yeah, man, that's that's what we're all trying to figure out in this new digital age and and even the bar gigs. I mean, it was 100 bucks a man like in the 70s, right? It's still kind of there. Like it's just it's just uh, we all have to we all have to really find a way here. Okay. Um Connor Myers, any tips on improving sweep picking? Big fan of the channel. Thank you, Connor. Um, I am not a big sweet picker. With that being said, so like I'm not doing like the crazy neoclassical shred pick uh, sweep picking. But with that being said, I do lots of mini sweeps, right? Like. <laughs> Right? And now, I, when I do that, tend to focus on three notes, right? Because I'm a hybrid picker, uh, i am kind of become conditioned now to really think in three-note clusters, in triad clusters, if you will. And so that has um, also translated to when I'm not hybrid picking and I'm sweeping across with the pick. So I'm always thinking triads now i don't sweep in like the big shape so in other words like if i'm going to do a piece of a minor right up here i might do a c and e and do a little just one downstroke right but i'm not you're never going to see me go right like those big sweeps so i just do little mini sweeps based on triads um and the way to do it is, again, practice having everything down one stroke, right? But you want, you want, as soon as you hit it, to release the pressure from each string. So instead of, it's like, right? It's hard to do slow. The people that are really good sweep pickers can do it slow. Um, but that's how I use it. So that's the best advice I can give you is you're thinking triads, you're thinking chord tones, um, and it's just kind of one fell swoop and muting, right? Releasing the note is key, not, not as much as the contact. Okay. Uh, many vibes. Show us my finger strum pick, no pick trick. I think you're talking about this. So like if I hold a chord, I do this little pick and flick thing, which very few people, I don't even know more than one or two people that, that do it like this. But it's, especially on acoustic guitar, it's the most percussive way. I like to get that kick, snare, kick, snare. So instead of just like, uh, you know, that kind of thing, like it's just really, I'm muting with my palm in my hand to get the bass notes. And then I'm literally flicking the upper triad, but again, palm muting in here to get that sound of the snare. So not, but and then you can add little harmony notes on top. Um, Bo, yeah. Take three notes when doing a solo melody and milk them for everything that they are worth. 
That is such a good practice. For example, if I'm in D, okay? Let's say I'm just doing the first three notes in D major. There's so much you can do here, and here's what I want you to try. I want you to try, like these are your three target notes, D, E, F sharp. Now, once you feel like you've exhausted everything you can in there, right? Do little bands like, different vibrato. Try getting to each of those target notes a different way using other notes, other frets that are not in that key. So for example, if I'm shooting for D, come in right behind it. Or maybe bend up to it. Same thing here. If I'm shooting for that, bend into it. Bend into it from the note right behind it. Bend into the note right behind it. Right? All those little microtones in there. You'd be surprised what you can do if you really limit yourself. And you can keep the same target notes, but you come at them from all different places. Big, big slides, you know, big little. All those little things. And you're just, all you're thinking about is how am I going to get to those three notes? Little, fun little things to work with. Um, Paolo, any advice on pinch harmonic? Can't seem to make them work. All right. I don't believe, maybe I can put distortion on right now. It might, it might be fine without it. Something like that. So the thing with pinch harmonics, right? One, uh, it really is in your best interest to be at your bridge pickup have a humbucker, have a solid amount of gain or overdrive or whatever you're, whatever you're doing. Um, it's just, it, it's the easiest that way, okay? And now the thing with pinch harmonics is that if you just pick one string, so pick third string, fifth fret, wherever you want to do it, what you want to do is get a, it's a little bit different on each guitar, but you want to get a feel uh, for them, for there being a lot of options, okay? What you're gonna do, see if you can zoom in here, is you are going to hold the pick just like that, and you want the pick to come off, or the string, to come off the tip of that pick and hit right on your thumb, the flesh of your thumb, and it immediately creates, uh, it makes it that, only that part of the string hit that upper, whatever you call that. Um, so if I'm holding this, right, and I go, if I'm only at the bottom, you're not going to get anything. And I'm just pulling it straight off into the flesh of my thumb, and then, but as I move to the middle, right above the pickup, you hear, there's like three distinct zones, right? Right? There's, there's, uh, I believe one of them is a fifth, one of them's an octave, um, and one might be a double octave. I don't think one of those is a third. I used to know that. Um, if I had a... Oh, I changed my, I changed my thing. Okay. So that is a major third. That's a double octave. Point is, point is, I don't want to spend all the time on this. Um, point is, those overtones are actual chord tones. Um, uh, uh, I don't know the physics behind it, but the octave... They're in there, okay? But there's usually three specific zones. And for most people, the most comfortable one is directly in front of the bridge pickup. But again, it's different on all guitars. 
So, so just like when you're learning palm muting, you know, like you want to start with your palm all the way down and move up and find your different options. Find your real chuggy part, your real tight part. Same thing with your with your pinch harmonics. You want to, you know, you want to find where your sweet spot is. Uh, and on different strings, it'll move a little bit, right? Because a thin unwound string will cycle differently than a larger wound string. And so you'll find getting your pinch harmonics on like your sixth string on third fret will be a little bit of a different spot than getting it on your seventh fret of your third string. Um, but these little pieces of muscle memory will build over time, especially as you get very familiar with your guitar. This is one of the main reasons why you'll find especially, especially players of heavy music really don't alternate the types of the guitars they play. The players of heavy music, you'll notice, man, they really don't change their game. Look at Dimebag. He played that Dean forever, right? I, I, I owe me with the SGs. Um, you're just, you know, Kirk Hammett with the, with the EMG 81s, you know, like the, uh, uh, um, really that fine tuning muscle memory builds over time. And this is one of a prime examples of, of a benefit you get from not changing your guitars and letting the years turn into decades and learning exactly how to make those pinch harmonics come out, um, uh, on the guitar like you're totally comfortable with. It's such a real thing. Um, and not just the feel of the guitar, but the pickups too. Like the Zach Wild has been using those EMG 81s forever for a reason. Okay. Um, Michael Gates, improvisation. How do I personally approach it? Um, personally, personally, I always alternate into between a couple different things. Um, one, I always kind of think about the rhythm and the chords first. So um, usually if I'm singing with a band, I'll be comping rhythm parts. And I will be figuring out where everybody else in the band is playing, you know, what register they're in. And uh, try to figure something else that, that adds something that doesn't take away. Not just, not just double their parts. And then when I go to take a lead, it's a constant back and forth between being the anchor of what I do and playing guitar-centric, guitar-lick things. So, uh, again, if I'm sitting in with somebody or if I'm coming up with a tune, uh, I'm going to, like, again, if I stay in the key of D, I'm going to start with something that sounds like the vocal melody, something to latch on to, right? <laughs> whatever motif makes sense all right but then i'll alternate or i'll when i when i feel like i've exhausted the melodic introduction or whatever, however long i decide to to fiddle with that based on how well i know the melody or how well it's working i'll throw in you know like guitar licks but then i'll usually find a way to bring it back to some type of melodic motif so it's always that balance between uh guitar licks and you know something another instrument could play or a voice could sing that that latches onto the melody besides that um i generally tend to be a chord tone soloist i tend to favor um a key centered approach which is why i always keep going back to the melody and not follow each chord off a cliff i like to do like a touch of this change and a touch of that change but that's it it's a delicate dance um Florida Man explains, full bend vibrato. I suck at it. This is a hard one, okay? 
ladies, gentlemen, this is not easy. Okay, one of the one of the one of the uh, hardest things to get is control during a bend or a slide, and still be able to use vibrato however you want to use it. So just taking you know one note. Let me remove some of this distortion here. Taking the one note. Endless different types of vibrato, just like a voice. You don't always want to have one vibrato, like or one slide. Like it, it should be lyrical. But doing that in a bend, it's really, really hard to have that control. Now, for some people, um, you want to anchor. You feel comfortable anchoring on the back, okay? And for some people, they, they. They will do it regardless with what finger they have. For me, I mean, look, the third finger is the strongest finger. It's bigger than the pinky. It's longer than the pinky. I don't do bend vibratos with my pinky. I know so many people just want to have one digit per fret, and they want to keep it mathematically pure, however you want to say that. I don't feel that way at all. I feel like if I'm going to do a big bend... And I'm going to have vibrato. I'm going to use my third finger. I'm going to be squeezing it, using my thumb as the anchor. And I'm using the other fingers with it. And if anything, I'm using the tip of my third finger to get the desired pitch. But I'm letting the other fingers, you know, do a lot of the heavy lifting and the support. So once I'm up there, I can use the tip of my third finger to try different types of things right but i'm supporting it with my whole hand uh key part of it is muting with your with your picking hand and your other fingers if possible I mean, the muting is the big thing so here's what i would recommend overshooting undershooting right to it so target right to it target past it target undershooting it and then all the way in between and you want to you don't want to rely on muscle memory you want to rely on your ear to saying oh i'm that's over i know it's going to be over and i'm going to bring it down to it or i know it's going to be under and i'm going to bring it up to it pass it and come back right so again target i'm going to go up over under right on it and then your vibrato becomes just like this little back and forth between a little over and a little under so so many people feel like they have to nail the pitch right when they get there or it's just dog shit right but that's not the case if you commit like a vocalist to sliding in and out of notes when you bend then you don't have to be exact because what you're trying to do then is you're trying to use your ear and you get in the habit of recognizing when it's over, recognizing when it's under, and then recognizing when you're in that zone. And the more you do that, the shorter those windows will become. And the shorter the windows become, the more control of your different types of vibrato you're going to generate, you're going to develop. Um, all right, uh, Ryan Cox, thank you so much, brother. Really appreciate that. Uh, question is, been playing more in the hybrid rhythm lead style that is associated with tunes like Little Wing or Lenny. Everything I do sounds the same. Any tips on approaching that style or players to listening, uh, to listen to? Okay, um, playing more in the hybrid lead style that is associated with tunes like Little Wing or Lenny. Okay, okay, so you don't mean hybrid picking. I know what you mean. Okay, so you're talking like, uh, like. Like having the chord be a part of your lead, so to speak. Um, so Hendrix was a huge influence on Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, and 
you know, this is one of these things where there's a couple shapes which just lend themselves to this. So yes, I teach the cage system and yes, there are five shapes for everything, but there's really only specific ones that will lend itself to this because you can embellish the chord tones, uh, the you know, you can embellish over the chord tones without causing trouble. So the first spot would be pattern three or your G shape. So again, if I'm in, if I'm in uh, G major like this, all these, right? That all works in open position. But if you take if you take this triad on the four, three, and two strings, the fifth root in major third, pick it up anywhere. I'm in C major now, right? So this is my fifth my root, my major third is C major. My full chord shape would be that G shape, right? But in here, and you play your major scale, all those work. So you can jump from, say, a root position, so it means C is in your bass, up, up to pattern three, first inversion means your third's in your bass, and lay that triad out and... And you can stay in that shape. Now, the next one I just kind of did is pattern one. This is your C shape. So this will be your third on your fourth string and your root on your second string. Again, imagine C major, right? And when you have this movable shape, this is now F, but all these little licks. key and you're still holding that little rhythm comp part down um, and again there's little clusters of this everywhere let's say you're in uh, D major up here in pattern four these little spots like this this little triad third fifth root you know all those little things work. So what you really want to pay attention to is that your your color, your additions, if you will, are all going to be above, as in like this way, this way. So every time you find yourself barring something, consider adding in a flurry using the other notes in key in that scale shape above it while you hold that bar. And that's really where most of these licks come from. You take your bar chord, right? And you look above and you think, where can that be my pedal tone? And then you add everything above that. And then again, move your changes. That's pretty much how I think about it. All right. Who's next here? Uh, BV, how you doing, my friend? Good to see you. Um, drop my lows. Really boomy when I hit the low strings. All right. I shall do that. Okay. Um, Jamie, or Jaime Henderson. Oh, how do I work on legato? My left hand gets tired fast. Should I practice trills with left hand to build endurance? Yes. Sorry to tell you that. Yes. So, I do most, all the time, first digit, right? So, one and two. 
one and three. One and four. Two and four. Feel the burn, right? I hadn't warmed up for that. And then I'll see one, two, four. One, three, four. And then forward and back. I mean, it's hard. Spread them out. But yeah, you gotta kind of do it. <laughs> um, but that, don't forget to stretch. But feeling the burn in there, that is that's what you're that's what you're going for. Yes, remember everybody. Please like, please subscribe, and uh, if you're interested in any online courses. Uh, I have everything on my website, guitargate.com. If you're a Stone Cold beginner, remember the very first level is completely free. So you can just go to guitargate.com and click the first first uh, course, the total beginner. And we talk about what guitar you should even get, you know, how to tune it, whatever. And it's completely free. And then if you dig the vibe, you can subscribe. And if not, thanks for giving me a shot. All right. Uh, Jeffrey, what's your process for learning a new song? Do you slow it down using YouTube or something? Okay, so, Jeffrey, um, I actually very rarely do the YouTube slow down thing, unless, of course, I'm learning a lead which I have to have exactly right. Um, if it's a more of a singer-songwriter song, I uh, focus on the progression, I, you know, what chords are in it, um, and the basic arrangement. Uh, and then I try to figure out the melody, so basically the, the key components of the song, the, the harmonic structure, the melodic structure, and then rhythmically, like, what parts do I have to get? Uh, you know, what is the point of the song? Like, what's the thing that you have to have for the song to be what it is? Now, if it's a really intricate song, like a metal tune or something where, I, you know, we're not talking about playing through changes. We're talking about playing specific riffs. Um, I will try to use my ear. A lot of times I will look at tabs and cheat, but most of them are incorrect. So um, I will watch other videos and see if someone else has made a lesson on it. And I will use my ear, watch the lesson, look at the tabs. And if I'm really still having trouble, I will see if I can download the sheet music. Um, and go note by note if I just feel like something's off, but it is, um, it is, uh, you know, it's different for every song, but for most, for most songs, I'm thinking, what are the chords? What's the harmonic content, right? Like, what are the changes I got to get rhythmically? Where are the hits? Like what, what vibe am I, do I have to have to make the song what it is? I learn the melody to every song that I learn. So what is the vocal melody, even if the guitarists don't play it? Because that's going to give me insight on what ties the song together. And then I go from there. Um, oh, God. Okay, yeah. Tonic, thank you. Mention scammers again. Guys, girls, YouTube is all over the place with scammers, okay? I will never ask you to Snapchat me or use Telegram or do anything like that. I'll never ask you to send money so that I ship you something that you won. Um, never, 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 never. Okay? Never, never, never. Stay safe out there. Okay? Fishing Idaho on a Harley. Good to see you. Um, all right. All right, here we go again. Is down picking something like Master Puppets realistic? My right hand gets tired fast. Um, not for most mortals, no. James Hetfield has one of the best right hands in the game. Um, I, I, if not the best. If not the best. Um, 
I cannot straight down pick all that super tight. Um, and yes, you can tell a little bit of a difference between an upstroke and a downstroke. But I mean, I mean, it, 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 that is the proper way to do it, if you will. It's the way he does it. He did it on the record. But, I mean, I alternate pick that thing. You have to. You have to. Uh, get a shovel. No, no worries. What's giving you the most trouble? Memorizing the notes on the neck. Well, this one, this one shouldn't be that hard. And check it out. Um, again, I don't know how familiar each of you are with the cage system. Um, yes, BV, thank you so much for dropping the link. All the links to, if any of this stuff you don't know, um, I do teach it all on Guitar Gate. But basically, uh, unlike piano, where there's one middle C, on guitar, there's, right? There's five or six of everything, depending on, you know, where you are on the strings. Um, so that's confusing to most people. But there's a benefit to that. The benefit is uh, naturally occurring shapes show themselves because you have different strings and different tunings. And you can learn where every C is on the guitar, every B flat, every G, doesn't matter, by just learning the five shapes. And again, if you want a full lesson on this, I believe it's... Uh, Lesson one in level two of Guitar Gate, and there's lots of other free resources online. But basically, the cage system means, uh, C, you know, C in cage, that acronym stands for the C major, the C chord. So play a C chord. Where are your C's in here? Root, root. This is a movable shape. So two C's, two D's, two E's, two F's, two G's, two A's, B and C. Now go to the next uh, letter in the acronym, A, caged. So give me an A chord. Where are your A's in here? Fifth and third string, two frets apart. Again, movable shape. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, keep going. G in cage, G shape. Where are your G's? Third fret, sixth string, open third fret first string movable shape G A B right C D E almost done E shape where are your E's sixth string fourth string first string movable shape E F G A B C D E and finally your D shape where are your D's Second string, movable shape, E, F, G. So, how's this work? You want to find every C on your guitar? Pattern one, put your first finger where your third finger is. So this is your C shape, you're going to your A shape. Put your first finger where your third finger is. A shape, goes to G shape. Put your first finger where your third finger is. First finger where your third finger is, D shape, and then finally put your first finger where your pinky is, and you're back at pattern one where you started. And you just played every C on the guitar. And all you did was learn three, uh, five shapes. And that's the same for every key, every chord, every scale, everything. You will grow out of the cage system. Um, but it is absolutely the quickest way to learn where all the notes are on your guitar. Because what you really don't want to do is memorize specifically what fret is, you know every F sharp is on. You just want to know where the other F sharps are around each F sharp, right? You want to be able to find them all because that's how you connect chords and scales and melodies. Okay. Um, Michael Johnston. This is a good question. I was just thinking about addressing this um, the other day. 
Ah, damn it. Um, I'm going to come back to this. So, um, bear with me a second, guys. Bear with me a second here. I just got some bad news. Um... Uh All right, well I don't even know what I'm supposed to share here. Um Did I did I lose that oh, All right. Um I have to go. I have to go um Hold on a second. Um, all right. Well, I, so I, I don't know if anybody out there knew this, but uh, when I was at, when I was at GitCon uh, in 2018 or 2019, uh, I got to meet. I got to meet um, um, my friend Mike, and his channel was the uh, the uh, China Guitar Skeptic. I don't know if you guys are familiar with his channel. We've done some videos, but uh, he and uh, Steve from Boston and myself um, uh, got really really close. I know Mike was our, always close with Rick Beato too, um, and. Uh, a, you know, a year or so ago, um, he started visibly uh, looking ill on camera, and ben, and basically he um, he uh, he just passed. I just got the message from Steve from Boston that he just passed. Um, I, I don't want to share too many details about what he had or didn't have or what the you know the thing was, but the, the, he he knew this was coming, and. Um, and uh yeah china mike exactly yeah and uh damn it that really takes the wind out of my sails um so for any of you out there that aren't familiar you can search china mike on youtube or uh uh china guitar skeptic but he was a great guy he was a really 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 uh nice to me kind to me he was a true family man i know he's got kids my heart really goes out to him. Um, so, wow, you got to see that in real time. That's that's great. Um, I'm not really sure what to say. Um, you know, I'm just going to call it there, and uh, I'm going to text some of our mutual friends to make sure everybody knows. I love you all out there. Take care. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers.